So you were the last team. I, I said a minute ago, Pierre, I said, I think this game's not about Aaron. I just don't know if Green Bay's defense can stop Atlanta's offense, which has two good backs, Julio, uh, Muhammad Sanu, a good old line. You faced, Pierre, you have faced this Green Bay defense. Mm -hmm. Sum it up for me. How good is it personnel-wise? Um, you know, they have a lot of troubles with their secondary, um, a lot of injuries, uh, right. which was well-documented this whole season. But, um, you know, they just need to play well on Sunday. You know, it, it all comes down to one game. But, you know, they're – they're in for a handful. They got a, they got a job cut out for them, especially being at home in um, – well, Atlanta being at home in their last game in the Atlanta Dome. Yeah. It could be a long it, day for them. Yeah, I, I, but you don't think Green Bay's personnel, you're the last team to beat them. When you were watching film before you faced Green Bay, did you mm -hmm. think they had elite corners? No, nah, I wouldn't say elite corners, but they have good safety work, good um, good safety help from um, – Well coached. Clinton Dix. Uh, yeah, ha, -ha Clinton, Clinton Dix. Dix and um, Michael Hyde is playing well. I think yeah. that's his name. And then Burnett, I think it is as well. Um, and they also get after the quarterback, which, you know, this um, makes it easier on the DBs. What do you make about distractions? So, you know, we, <laughs> we always say players are always like they don't matter, but Duke has lost three of five games since Drake, Grayson Allen got caught tripping. Mm -hmm. And Alabama lost when Lane Kiffin left before the big game. And OBJ and the Giants looked like garbage <laughs> before that. And Draymond Green with LeBron in the finals, they lost three straight. So we say they don't matter, but sometimes it does feel like they kind of matter. Do you think Antonio Brown matters? Um, I don't think what he did matters that much. I think, you know, the more that they talk about it is drawing a distraction. But Antonio Brown's going to go out there and play well. That's what he does week in and week out. I don't think his, his teammates are nervous that he's not going to play well. But I think, you know, the distractions do hurt people, especially when the game is bigger, like your conference finals to go to the Super Bowl. Because there's but more it, media out there. It's just, that's what it is. More media out there to talk about it instead of talking about the X's and O's. Have you ever been in a locker room with the culture Washington? Washington's had some distractions. Where there was a week, Pierre, mm. there was a week of distractions. Do you, do you Have you ever been in that kind of week? <laughs> yeah, especially in Washington, D.C. There's been a lot of distractions right. in, that, in that locker room. And how, what, what, how do the players react? You know, you got to block it out and try to focus on the game. That's do coaches talk about it? No, Tay Drew, not really. They say, hey, don't say nothing, say very little, talk about football, and then that's it. You know, we don't have to keep talking about the distraction. Just quiet, basically. Okay, so Jason Whitlock's on this show. We were talking about uh, Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, I would I would franchise tag him. Um, I don't believe every franchise quarterback has to be Aaron Rodgers. I think Ryan Tannehill is a franchise quarterback. Again, not every mm -hmm. business is as big as Facebook and Google. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of local businesses. Yes. So I think Kirk Cousins is a lower-end franchise quarterback. Here was Jason Whitlock talking about him on my show. We just saw Dak Prescott and Aaron Rodgers at the end of a game. Both of them delivered. Your quarterback, Kirk Cousins, had two chances to put y'all in the playoffs at the end of that last regular season game, and he didn't get it done either time. I'm off of him. Franchise him or move him. Let, let Kyle Shanahan have him in San Francisco and give him a long-term contract. That was Jason Whitlock talking to your teammate Josh Norman. Mm -hmm. As a receiver for Washington, what do you do with Kirk? You keep working. You keep working together. You know, like like you said, everybody's not a franchise quarterback. They're not born a franchise quarterback, but you continue to get better. You understand your job. You simplify your job and try to understand what you're trying to accomplish on each and every play so you can be on the same page so that we both and everybody looks like a franchise player, quarterback, like a match made in heaven. What, what does he do really yeah. well? He communicates very well. He throws the ball very well. Um, you know, he talks to, you know, the offensive line, the tight ends, the receivers, the running backs. He gets everybody prepared. He um, presets the um, – protection for the offensive line and the running backs. It gets everybody in position to do well. So, you know, they put a lot on the quarterback, and, you know, he, he responds well. Is he a hard worker? Oh, yeah, very hard worker. Very hard worker. He's dedicated to Do players football. like him? Yeah, players love him. Players love him. He's a good guy. He's a quarterback, you know, first, and he tries to communicate with everybody to make everybody else's job as easy. Okay, so Sean McVay is your coordinator, and now he ends up as the L.A. Rams coach, and nobody knows who he is. Seriously. He mm -hmm. looks like the guy that uh, – I worked at the Verizon store when I got a phone last week, so nobody knows who the heck this guy is. Can you just tell us about the dude? Who is he? What's he um, he's a great guy, very young coach. Um, young players will love him. Older players will love him. He is a personal guy. He will communicate very well with everybody in the building. Um, he's an offensive-minded coach where he takes over, you know, to play calling. and he definitely does his research on the defenses. Does he like to throw it deep underneath? Does he <laughs> like to run? What, what? I mean, you guys have you guys have deep receivers now. Uh -huh. Jordan Reed can go vertical. You uh -huh. go vertical. Deshaun goes vertical. 
would you call him a risk taker or is he more uh, subdued? Like, what's his uh, ideology of football? He likes to make the big plays. He likes to get the playmakers the ball in their hand. He likes, you know, he has an explosive offense and he likes to use it. And that's what he will do in um, L.A. with um, Goff. Uh, Goff and the receiver, Tavon Austin and, and Todd Gurley. He's an over-the-top guy. He, he yeah. wants to throw the ball deep. Yeah, he will throw the ball, and it will be you know, an exciting offense. Um, you signed with Washington in 2012. Chris Carter is a broadcaster and mm-hmm. a former Hall of Fame player. And apparently you have trained with Chris Carter. Trained a lot with Chris Carter. Um, a very, very smart guy and um, entertaining guy. So, <laughs> so tell me about how did you meet him and what, what's the training done for you? Um, I work out down in Florida uh, in Boca Raton with XP Sports. And ever since I came out of the school for the combine, training for the combine, and, you know, that's where I've been working out with um, Tony Villani and Chris Carter. And, you know, those guys have helped me. Uh, isn't all working out the same? Yeah, I guess it's all the same where you work on your speed, strength, and um, your condition. Did he, what did he teach you? He teach me. But he, he goes in closer into the receiver, you know, because he played receiver, obviously, from catching the ball to route running, setting up routes, and coming in and out of your breaks catching anything and everything, just balance, just head over your toes, all these technicals with the receiver. But the, the sports, the the working out is, you know, conditioning, staying in shape and being ready for, you know, for football season. Six-round pick in 2008 by the Colts. So you mm-hmm. break into the league with Peyton Manning. Yes, sir. Uh, and he still had a few years left. Mm-hmm. Um Peyton has a reputation as as an incredible work ethic, almost maniacal. Yeah. And he also has um, a reputation that when you got to the line – Mm-hmm. Um, he'll audible out of stuff. Oh, yeah. So was it hard to play with Peyton? <laughs> yes, it was hard to play with Peyton. It was first because it was Peyton. Then it was, you know, he was changing plays at the line of scrimmage. But once you got the hang of it, once because we practiced that the same way we did in, in the games is how we practiced. So what you saw in the games were realistic was, you know, sometimes there were changes being made, sometimes there weren't changes being made. But we practiced that throughout the week, so it wasn't a surprise on Sundays. But Was he a hand signal guy? It depends if it was away or home. Sometimes he was hand signal. Sometimes he was tell you. So it all depends on, you know, if we're in Indy, it's quiet. So he can tell you. If it's away game and it's loud, he'll, you know, give you a hand signal. Did he bark? Was he tough? Did he yell? He, yeah, he was tough. He was tough when he needed to be, like, you know, when things weren't going away. But, you know, you expect it from him because he wants everybody to do well. So he had high expectations for you. So it made you have high expectations for yourself. Did you ever drop a ball and feel <laughs> disappointed all the time. Like, you could drop a Kirk Cousins ball. But if you drop a Peyton ball. The first pass Peyton ever threw to me, I dropped. Um, it was in practice. But, you know, I dropped it. I was like, like it was. I felt disappointed every time. Yeah, regardless, because they're actually trying to throw me the ball and I'm dropping it. So it was like, oh, man, like, they're going to cut me any day now. <laughs> and you made it. Made a great career. <laughs> You're a free agent in March. Uh, mm-hmm. You're going to test the market, right? I'm, I, I hope not, but, you know, if, <laughs> if, if it goes that way, I'll, you know, I've, I've done it before, so it's, it won't be nothing new. <laughs> you're going to get you're going to get some offers. That's that's a good thing. You know, we want to be where you wanted. OK, <laughs> would you take less to stay in D.C.? Less? Well, I think I did better than, uh, you know, I, I think I kept getting better. I don't know why I should take less. By the way, L.A. needs <laughs> a receiver. Uh, uh, badly. <laughs> hey, I want to play for a team badly. So if a team wants me, I'm willing to be where I want they to. They <laughs> need a number one receiver. Do you like L.A.? It never rains in Southern California. Yeah. Well, it does <laughs> this does month. Lately. It does this month. Nice meeting you, man. Thank Pierre Garcon. Big news. The Herd will be live in Houston starting Monday, January 30th as we get ready for Super Bowl 51. And we're just the start of a full lineup of shows live from site on FS1. Undisputed will kick off each day at 930 Eastern, followed by us, Garbage Time, Fox Sports Live, and Speak for Yourself. FS1 Super Bowl week. Don't miss it.